Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Boomstick XL. And as you can see, folks, we used to do this on the regular on Thursdays until I burnt myself out and needed to kind of drop it to three shows. But le- yesterday, something happened that sent shockwaves through the interwebs. We're going to break that down today. And as I woke up this morning, I I gotta be completely honest with you, I walked away unbelievably disappointed with a lot of big time Xbox supporters and some of the things they were saying. I walked away uh, once again disappointed with some of the PlayStation community that says, and I quote, this is a $70 billion L for Phil Spencer. Uh, the, the, you know, we're going to, we're going to get into some of the comments, quite frankly, uh, I'm only talking about him and I'm not mentioning names cause I'm not going to give any clout to anyone that doesn't deserve it. But I do have some quotes from people that actually do make sense. We're going to get into that, but before we do, let's get into the guests that are here. And of course the incredible representative of the PlayStation nation known as Mr. Bad, Bit, the voice of the trophy room. How you doing, Joe? Welcome. I have a desire to talk about Microsoft and to talk about <laughs> Activision today, Boo. Yes, Strong yes, and, desire. I, and we're going to fulfill that desire, sir. That's right, because um, you don't want to know why, Boom. Why? I respect our partnership. Uh, you know? There you go. We respect each other's partnership. I love it. This is fantastic. Uh, well, Joe, listen, it's great to have you a part of the conversation. It is going to be a lot of fun uh, to talk about, unfortunately. Uh, it's 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 you know it's it's sad times that we actually have to talk about this, but I feel that as uh, you know representatives of the com- of the gaming community, the way that we are, it, it it behooves us to get out in front of something like this that is obviously being uh, uh, you know f- pushed forward through uh, fear, anxiety, a lot of lies behind it as well, and we wanted to clear up some of the uh, the, the misinformation that is currently floating around on the interwebs. But I also got to bring in someone that is. Uh, you know that knows his way around a space or three um uh umbra what's going on brother how how are you and man that five hour uh space you had yesterday there was some knuckleheads in there what's going on <laughs> yes it was uh good morning to you guys in the chat and good morning boom and, and bad bit. you know uh there were some knuckleheads as you put it uh, unfortunately uh, i think the five hour space was like a, a little therapy session hopefully some of them got out of that yeah, well, well, we're gonna we're gonna break it down now. Obviously, if if you're if you're sitting in your chair in your car at work on a break and you're wondering what in good gracious are we talking about, let me break down the statement that sent the internet on fire yesterday, and it comes the way of Microsoft President and Head Attorney Brad Smith. And he revealed this yesterday, and this is what he had to say. Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement with Activision. That commitment extends into the future as well. And we have committed to Sony that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony's fans can continue to enjoy the games they love. And the final statement from Brad says this, the acquisition, I think, is a clear indicator of what we hope to do if we acquire, see that word, if we acquire Activision Blizzard, invest in even more in innovation, Bring it to more people, bring it to more platforms, and make it even more useful and hopefully delightful for people who use it. Now, before I get into what uh, some of the um, the, the, the comments that I pulled in response to this, I kind of want to start with our guests. And, and again, we, we are expecting a few more people to pop in here momentarily. Hopefully, we get um, Kay Asante to jump in. Uh, we also hoping to get Everborn, and I put the feelers out for a few other people. So check your DMs, folks. If you want to be a part of the conversation, hit me up. My D, I'm, I'm watching Twitter as well as the uh, as the stream, uh, and let me know if you want to, you know, get in here. Even if you're gonna, you know, throw your bricks down for 15, 20 minutes and then bounce, that's fine as well. But Mr. Bad Bit, you know, yeah. we, we joke about this, right? Sure. You know, you and I and, and Embra were 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 joking about this in, in the pregame. 
And and to be completely fair and honest, I I find it to be preposterous that we're even talking about this. And some of the some of the reactions that happened yesterday, I'm going to say it, were embarrassing, yeah. straight yeah. up embarrassing. Because I think that you know when you start reading the comments, like this is an L for for Phil Spencer. Uh, I don't know how that is, but okay, if that's if, if that's what you honestly believe. PlayStation gamers parading in the streets. Ah, uh, you see, Microsoft, the good guy, the good guy, Microsoft fails again. I, I, I've read it, but we're going to talk about it. G give me your initial take of what um, Brad Smith had to say regarding this monster acquisition. Yeah, I mean, well, first and foremost, it's still a W for Microsoft. They have obtained one of the largest publishers uh, in the world, and some of the most popular ip not just of gaming but in the world um so you know my initial impressions are uh, as what i've thought since you know phil spencer put out that tweet they have a desire to leave live service games like call of duty on the platform yes. because there's money to be made you know, a lot of people are like, oh, how could they do this? They're disrespecting Xbox players. The bean counters have already predicted that a lot of people say a lot of things, but don't mean a lot of them. Um, and that you're going to end up playing Call of Duty no matter what. <laughs> um, and that there's money that you're leaving on the table if you just rip something away from another community. 100%. So, this is not because Phil Spencer's kind. He's not a, he, I bet he's a sweetheart. I absolutely think he, he if, if we, if we if we met, we'd be agreeing and, and having a fun chat about games. Phil Spencer made this decision and as long and as well with the other executives because there's money on the table. Remember, they're a business. They're not a charity. They're not here for you to wave your flag around. And Phil Spencer isn't here to catch all your flowers. Um, he's here to make money for his organization. And he has an obligation to the shareholders to do that. Now, at the same exact time, this is awesome. If you're an Xbox person, because nothing has changed since the 17th, you are still going to get every Activision Blizzard King game on Game Pass. Yeah. You're going to have that. You're going to get that on your service for 15 bucks a month. That is awesome for you as the Xbox gamer. To me, I don't understand the logic of this is an L for, for Xbox because suddenly PlayStation players can still play Activision Blizzard games. To me, you should be focusing on yourself. You don't have to go and spend $70 for Diablo. You don't have to go and spend $70 yeah. for Overwatch 2. You don't have to go out there, spend $70 on Call of Duty or pay for a dumb upgrade. You have one. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares if some, you know, if Joe Blow Pony 69 Forever uh, gets to play it as well. He's too busy <laughs> on Twitter. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he's playing Twitter. He's actually not playing games, which yeah. unfortunately most of these knuckleheads. Joe, Joe I couldn't have put it any better. Uh, Umbra, let's get your opinion on this, brother. Um, yesterday, obviously, you did a Spaces. And uh, I'm sure that as a, as a representative of that space, you were probably taken a bit back on some of the responses from people, even within the Xbox community, which I think that were as bad as some of the takes from the PlayStation uh, hating community. And again, let's, let's just let's make it very clear. The people that we're referencing are just a minute, small, really unimportant part yeah. of the gaming community, more so the, the, the social media community, because they are the loudest, but usually they are also the dumbest. But let, let's get your, uh, your opinion on this, Umbra. W what were you what were you thinking when Brad Smith made this announcement, which sounds like let's be honest, what Phil Spencer said, but just a lot more, you know, a big, I guess bigger words than what Phil could fit into uh, 120 characters on Twitter. You know, you said it exactly right. It, it was, it's funny because you say, how did I take it when I, the, I saw the reactions? You know, I wish I could say, you know, I was saying, I wish I could say I was surprised. I was mm -hmm. not. I, I felt it coming. I knew it was coming as soon as I saw it, uh, the uh, update about it from Brad and from uh, Tom Warren and such. I was like, yeah, I, I already know. I saw spaces pop up. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going in there. Uh, and then I hit, I hit my own later. So I knew what was going to be, what it was going to be. And I said, okay, I'll try to have this and bring some common sense and logic to it later. And uh, funny enough, I hosted it with my boy, Logic Kyle. But, um, you know, it, the thing is, 
much like you. And it's so funny because we were hosting the space and I'm talking to these guys and the reactions were just, as you said, all over the place, typically doom saying. And until I actually went and read the article myself, I was like, okay, I, you guys, I get it. Yeah, it's going to be on PlayStation, blah, blah, blah. And then I read it. I'm like, you know, this reads an awful lot like what Phil said before. You know, it's just Indeed. more words. Like you just said, it's more words. It's, it's more obviously uh, more thought out. And it's the, the I guess the stranger part was that it was from Microsoft itself and not Xbox. You know, that I think that was probably the more surprising right. thing for me. But all that told me was that it's a big major thing that they're making sure it gets passed i mean they have to say what they have to say to get this through so and i think that's i think i, I want you to elaborate on that uh umbra if you don't mind because i'm going to come back to joe on that the, the importance of the see, see look I, I gotta be honest with you like I, i'm sitting here and i got a million things that i want to say and i'm going to try and get it out in a proper manner that i don't start yelling and getting upset because i'm not going to be become one of these knuckleheads here's the thing folks take call of duty yeah. All right, take this this monster IP, put it in your pocket for 10 minutes and take a breath, because if you think that it's only about um, Call of Duty, then you are small minded because the big fish here is not Call of Duty. It is one of the big fish. The the monster whale in the room is King. King is one of the most largest mobile money making machines in gaming only second to the one that um i believe take two just bought uh, uh zynga zynga yeah okay so understand that they are trying to get a deal done that has a million eyes on it we are in a cancel culture this is the biggest deal in microsoft history folks what are you expecting them to say can we just take a second to you know put our thoughts in into actual understandable words and not having a shit fit on mm -hmm. on social media to make a boob of yourself but please continue no, you said it just right. And I got really frustrated like that because, I mean, I got heated. It got a little heated. It wasn't too crazy, but we kept it under control. But the part that like some people just missed is, well, why do I need an Xbox if I can just do this and I can just play on my PC? And I'm like, okay, that's what Microsoft wants you to do. Like, what, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you arguing? What are we talking about here when yes. you say that? It's, it's just, not it about no consoles. <laughs> exactly. It's about it content. No exactly. I'm like, what are we talking about? Because, you know, and these are good guys, some of them. You don't get me wrong. Yeah. And, and, and I say all this to say, uh, I know why so many reacted the way they did. It's obvious. I mean, it's a console warring nonsense all the time because they I already knew the PlayStation gamers were going to do what they did, the fanboys, at least the extreme ones. So the guy, Xbox guys are already like preemptively upset because they know what's coming. And that's the unfortunate part about the whole console warring nonsense. So because of that, they overreact. And I heard some people calling field names and such, you know, cursing them out. I'm like, is it that serious to you? You know, like you said, it's a, it's a still a W for us. It's a walking W, no matter which way you look at it. I mean, you could still say the same for PlayStation gamers in a way, because at least they'll have it on a platform of their choice. But we have the added bonus of it being in Game Pass day and date without having to pay anything extra. Indeed, and and, and I and I think that what right there is the is the contributing main factor because yeah. understand that the pricing. I I don't think you're going to see Microsoft kind of roll it back and okay they're part of us at sixty dollars now. No, it's going to stay at seventy bucks. And if you want to play on PlayStation, Microsoft is still going to be making money on that because. And again, we don't know if they went over to uh, Jim Ryan and said, "Hey, listen, you know, Jim, we want to keep this on here, uh, you know, but we got to kind of lower the thirty, uh, you know, the thirty percent. You know, may, maybe we bring it down to twenty. Mm -hmm. I, I, I honestly, I don't know." You know mm -hmm. where, where the bargaining chip is, but that right, that right there, that particular point of yours, Umbra, is is right on, right on the nose. Because if you are an Xbox player who supports Xbox Game Pass, whether that be the ten dollar a month and that you only play on console, or you get Ultimate for uh, for fifteen, and you get the bell, all the bells and whistles. All you have to do is look and say, okay, let, 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 let's, let's, let's do simple mathematics here. This is, this is knucklehead mathematics 101, folks, so get ready. $15, 500 plus games, oh, and all first-party Microsoft games, which, quite frankly, there is a shitstorm. 
Yeah. Or I go by Call of Duty on the PlayStation for seventy six forty three here in New York, and I got the one game. Folks, yeah. you, I, I, I kept saying, you know, again, Umbra, you brought up a great point. Oh, why do I need an Xbox? Well, because I would rather be playing on an Xbox to get all I can for all of my money in a, in a current world situation where people don't have spendable cash like we used to because the world kind of sucks. So yep. you want to get the most for your money, and Game Pass offers that to you. But continue, please. No, you, you said it just right. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing for me was – um, and I, I, me and Everborn both said it in a space. And I might as well, like I said, was much more aggressive. What's up, Mav? It was, Mav it was, is here. Yes, Mav. What's, what's going on, brother? What's up, brother? Mine was, more, mine was more along the lines of if you were enjoying everything that Xbox was doing before, and everybody should have. If we, if we, you, I've been with Xbox since the OG Xbox. Okay, I've been through the good, the bad, and the good again. Or now the going to the great, I guess. So if you like... Oh, this right here, this Call of Duty. And I, I'll just put this out there. I'm not the biggest Call of Duty fan, so maybe I'm a little bit partial. If it was Halo, maybe I'll be reacting like them too. Like, what? How dare you feel? <laughs> but, you know, it's like, I don't know. I take it like we got all these excellent IP coming. We already know what's in development. We got 29, what, studios, I believe. You got 50 it's, different uh, projects in a deal, it's, it's, With this deal, it's going to be 34. 34. And you got like 50 plus, 50 plus uh, IP in development. Yes, correct. If you were upset before, I mean, uh, excuse me, content before, and this right here shook you to like, oh, what was me? Phil, what are you doing? Rest in peace, Xbox. Something is wrong. You know, and and the guys in the space were like, well, this just, you know, just makes me question this. I said, well, listen, maybe you need to lay your burden down and go to PS, the PlayStation, because if this isn't good enough for you, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I it's because like say. they want they want blood. It's yeah. it's like somehow Sony has offended them in such a way <laughs> that um that they need to be destroyed. Yeah. That's like literally the logic, right? <laughs> yeah. And there are some creators that have that have jumped on that train, right? Of like yeah. of, of that logic and have emboldened people like that to say d- stupid shit. And the fact of the matter is, in 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 all honesty. The fact of the matter is, A, why would you want that? That's then like thousands of people that lose their jobs. B, that's never going to happen. And C, you're looking like children. You see 30-year-old men out there having temper tantrums over over like real talk stuff that doesn't involve you, man. (laughs) It's it's nonsense. They're, They're keeping some kind of score. Right. It's yes. Like, yes. You know, keeping score, and they think that this was an opportunity to land a big punch, you know, and it's like now taken away from them. So it's they're fighting. It's, uh, it's business. Over, it is. Right? It is a business. At the end of the like, day, that's what people fail uh, uh, fail on. Is like at the end of the day, yeah. it's business. Do you want to make good business or bad business? Yeah. And again, like I, I, you know, we said this in the in the private chat. I say here right now, man. You know, Sony. Uh, I, first off, I should have a shirt. That says Joseph was right. When I say things that generally happen, Phil Spencer walks into that Sony room. You ha- think they had a conversation that was more of what's happening to Call of Duty? They definitely did. They're definitely they definitely looked at each other, going, "Would you like to form an alliance?" You know, uh, you're, my enemy's enemy is my friend. We yeah, see that there are indeed. strangers about to enter the game space of which we never thought would enter the game space, and yet here they are. Um, so we need to prepare and buckle down the hatch. Look, whatever Amazon or Apple or whatever fear that we have of them entering the space and consolidating more of the games we love to buy their proprietary service, um, that fear is driving a lot of reaction from Sony and Microsoft. And so to me, if I'm Microsoft and if I'm Sony, I want each other as competition. I've been saying this, I'm a broken goddamn record. I don't want anyone else coming in here and stronger opponents to come on in here because at, at, at best it's healthy competition, right? They, and, and they consolidate more and now you have to pay 15 bucks here, 15 bucks there, 15 bucks there a month. And all of a sudden you're just stuck now paying 60 bucks uh, uh, again for, for a service at worst, they come in here, they fail studios, get dissolved. People get just bought off and sold. People leave and that sucks. That's a whole lot of disruption uh, for a long period of time. 
I don't want that. I don't think anybody really wants that. So Microsoft made an executive decision based on money, profits, and audience. And the fact is, it's not good business to say, you know what? What has been multi-platform for years now, decades even, it's not. And so it's kind of what we said on the trophy room a few weeks back. It's a different feeling of having to be on an ecosystem than wanting to be on an ecosystem. What Microsoft okay. wants is for you to want to be there. If you have to be there, well, that's just Amazon Prime. And we all know what we think of Amazon Prime video. Sucks. It's awful. Awful app. But I, I have to use it because the boys is there, right? Yeah. So if I'm Microsoft, uh, to me, this move just makes sense because now all of a sudden you're like, okay, you have two options, right? Giving people choice, 70 bucks for, for a game on PlayStation, or you pay 15 bucks. This game is yours. And then whatever incentives game pass then gives you afterwards. Look at halo, halo infinite's a great example. Every month they give you bonus XP and a bonus weapon skin. You don't think they're going to do that for call of duty. Don't think they're going to do no, that exactly. for overwatch. Yeah. Don't think they're going to do that for Diablo. They definitely are. So by giving that choice there, it makes Microsoft look more appealing than, than, a, than a bully taking something away from someone. It's just good business. It, it, and it again, if you're in the Microsoft ecosystem, if you're even one of the fanboys, this is excellent for you, man. Because every yeah. time there's a game that comes out, you get to have a trolley meme of like, I've saved $20,000 <laughs> on Xbox <laughs> games. Like, you get to have that. Hey, and man, what better is, is that for you? you? You got to use it like Destin Legary. You know, it's it's crazy that the PlayStation gamers get to play this game. But you know what's even crazier? Exactly. I saved so much money by having yeah. only, by having Game Pass Ultimate. Exactly. It's a win. It's just a win for everybody. The And the one interesting thing, too, um, I don't want to sidetrack us too much, um, is, is, man, Microsoft's going after Nintendo. Like, they, they want... They want yeah. that switch. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, no not like to acquire, but like they're they're buttering them up so much. It's, probably it's adorable. Really. People in the chat when you said it that way the first time. <laughs> they probably you know what, you know what? Yeah. you're saying. You're saying that right too, bad. But it is a win for everyone because huh. the gamers that enjoy getting games in a service like Game Pass get to still do that, and the gamers that enjoy paying seventy dollars for games still get to do that as well. Right. Yes. So, uh, if there's an argument where hey, it's not sustainable, right? Uh, I don't like this model. You know, you can still buy the games on on PlayStation, and then things continue as they always have. And yeah. if you're in subscriber to Game Pass, then you're going to get the games at even a better value uh, on that ecosystem, right? Yeah. So, uh, and if you want to buy them, guess what? You can do that too. Even you on can Xbox. do that. The cho choice is key, and and yeah. that's the thing that Microsoft hasn't taken away is choice. Matt, before I, I bring you in on the conversation and get your thoughts process uh tonight i'm going to be on pm in the pm with mav and pong soul uh, that goes Poo live Pong. at 7 p.m eastern standard time and i will be yep. i'll be a guest on there uh and i'm looking forward to talking more about this because i'm assuming this is a conversation that isn't going going to go away yeah and of course friday mornings breakfast at boom 10 a.m eastern standard time we're going to be talking some starfield news um some quotes from phil spencer himself regarding it being one of the biggest games and one that he wants more people to play than ever. So we're going to get into that. Uh, but let me catch up on some of the Super Chats, and we have quite a few of them. Thank you, generous audience. Uh, Daryl Hill, or Darnell Hill, I'm sorry, drops an outstanding $10 Super Chat and says, Activision needs a lot of work. I don't like the idea of Xbox Game Studios working as support for Call of Duty. If it was exclusive, that's one thing. But for XGS to support multiplats, I'm mixed now. And that's, you know, you, you know, you absolutely are entitled to feel that way. I, I, I just don't know if it's if, if the, the the feeling that you're having is that we want to pile on the rabbit, so to speak. If you're an old Bugs Bunny fan, you understand what that means. You know, you know, Sony, we, we have all, you know, Sony has this many um you know studios now we have doubled their studios and we're gonna we're gonna jump all over them Th yeah. that that's a conversation that people are having i don't agree with that conversation i i believe in i believe exclusives are incredibly important but i think what we are not understanding here is mm -hmm. that the wording you have to read the wording read it a few times and take a sit a, a, a stance back and you're going to see he didn't say every every big triple a right. activision blizzard game is coming 
to the uh, to the um, you know to to, uh, to PlayStation. I'm sure that there is going to be a select few, but again, you have to realize that the eyes of the world, specifically the world that's going to approve this deal, are on Microsoft, and but it behooves them to obviously um, you know say the right things. Uh, we are, we have a. Uh, also if i could just if i could just butt in with this i don't think like you know xbox game studios are going to help them like activision blizzard they are their own separate entity but look at it as this when bethesda was bought they didn't really do any layoffs instead they just infused that company with more money Mm -hmm. so that they could go on hiring sprees and hire more people yes i'm if i'm a betting man they're going to be doing the same exact thing yes probably hiring support studios for call of duty taking teams like toys for bob out of call of duty so that they could go make their crash and spyro games this is actually benefits you um greatly so i would look at it like like that and i appreciate the super chat uh, risk it for the biscuit. I love this one. He says Microsoft has to keep the deal healthy by saying slash doing the right things. Contracts have to be honored to ensure future deals are also viable. Use that brain. Indeed, that's a fantastic. Dan Lazaro, generous friend of the show, he drops a five dollars super chat and says PlayStation number one selling game is on an on an Xbox. PlayStation players pay $70. Game Pass gets every game for free. Well, pretty much, yes. Xbox wins all around. And, and indeed, that, again, that is the running co- conversation that Xbox gamers, if you support um, Xbox Game Pass, well, you're a wiener. Uh, that's that's just, you know, what, what can I say? It, it, we don't have to go out and spend the, uh, the 76, 43 here in New York to play the next Call of Duty. We can spend, I mean, think about that for a second. You could logistically nearly get five months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate for the price of one 7643 game for PlayStation. Where do you think you're going to play your games? You're probably going to play them, if not on PC, you're going to play them on Xbox. But you know what? If you wanted to play on PC, you have that option too. Options are certainly a key to this conversation. We also have a few more Super Chats. Let me just grab those real quick. And we'll, uh, okay, so we have Mr. Too Opinionated drops a $5 super chat and says, Infinite is the homie. Uh, he said, always calm, cool, and intelligent. He's right. Phil Spencer isn't fighting the console war. Get over it. And we also have uh, Kay Asante joining us as well. This is this now, this oh, now, this is turning gentleman. into a party, ladies and gentlemen. Um, morning, Kay. Have, we have uh, Henry978 drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, I believe one reason to buy Activision Blizzard was to also help the tournament esports platform that they acquired. Yes, that is absolutely correct. They acquired, I believe it was Smash GG. Uh, no one talks about that because, well, they're not doing anything yet, but when you have Halo and you have now Call of Duty under the umbrella, think about how big Smash GG can be for microsoft again it's it's a business folks but before i bring in uh mav on the conversation i i, I kind of i well we, well we have another one coming in from hitman drops a five dollars super chat and says haha all i want is call of duty to become a game as a service and that's and 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 that it's on game pass i don't care if it's on playstation or nintendo and i and i think that's a the proper settlement but I think that the one thing that no one has mentioned, I've beaten this drum more times than not. I'm very surprised no one jumped on it. The real uh, exclusive here, folks, is Xbox Game Pass. That is the real exclusive for Microsoft. That's why the the, the whole conversation of, well, if Microsoft puts Call of Duty everywhere, no one's going to buy an Xbox. Wrong. I'm telling you you're wrong because when the Series S drops 250 bucks this fall and Sony is still selling their consoles at five, four and five hundred dollars respectively, and then you look over to the left side and you're like, 250, three months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, one buck, and I can pay this and I can play all the same games. And oh, they have Call of Duty in there, they have right. Halo, they have and- Avowed. 
Right. And boom, one more thing. It's, it's John Wolf. Thanks for the invite. Hey, sorry, John, I'm no a, problem, uh, sorry, I'm a little late, buddy. I had to take care of something for work. Uh, another another thing I, I like to add to, to what you're saying is that value proposition. Also for Game Pass members, we, we have to remember the perks that are going to come with that. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm a pretty active Call of Duty player and uh, I know how expensive those COD points can get. So Microsoft can e easily shift, you know, and, and give out those COD points every month in, in, in kind of incentivizing people to join the, the platform and, and get the game through Game Pass and Xbox. So there's there's a lot of uh, layers to this, obviously. Um, you know, I, I, I did see yesterday's everyone's reaction. I kind of sat back and, and, and kind of, I, I, I took it all in. And, and one of the things that, that we all have to remember, boom, in my opinion, is that unfortunately, as fair or unfair as it seems, Microsoft, uh, you know, we all know that they've always kind of been, uh, they can do no, right? If they try to buy exclusivity, we see the media turn on them and the fans. They, we saw that with Tomb Raider. So in, in a deal like this, I think that it's from the community aspect of, of the title, Call of Duty, uh, it's, it's kind of bigger than oh, platforms. Man, it, 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 it transcends all platforms. And and Call of Duty is something that you know the it's the community aspect, and and that's yeah. something that I think that Xbox, if they would have taken away the ability for PlayStation players to play Call of Duty, that would have been a really really bad look on Microsoft's yeah. part. Yeah, Boom, are you all right? Because you said you froze for a second. Yep. He, all right. You know what? I'll be boomsick for a second. You know. <laughs> Boom! You look so you know. and different. I know, right? What's going Wait, on? Who voted you in, Joe? <laughs> hold on, hold on. We need a vote here. This, this is, is a democracy. dictatorship. I call <laughs> Dibsies. Not even a mere speculation I apologize. I, I know. Up the whole thing goes off the rails. Oh, yeah, oh, no, 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 that's Thank God. Yeah, you know Thank what God. Was? Joe was just I, uh, about to take over. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, yep. it's cool. No, well, I, I was trying to switch over to the next Call of Duty stuff. So bear with me as I do that. First of all, this is this is a monster panel. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'm I because we have so many people, so many beautiful people here, I am literally going to forget the uh the, the footage because you're not here to watch the Call of Duty. You know what the game looks like. You're here to hear these people talk to talk and walk the walk. So Mav, let's go to you next on this. The, the, wh what we were talking about, and I want to get everyone's opinion of not where they were, but what how you took this was yesterday's announcement that uh, that we talked about to open up the show from Brad Smith. Now, Brad Smith is the president of Ec of Microsoft, and obviously he's the head lawyer uh, that's 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 at Microsoft, but he's also one of the big wigs that are handling this Call of Duty um, Activision Blizzard deal. I mean, wh where do you take? Uh, what he had to say, and and I want to re, I re, we already have almost four hundred people here. I think actually over four hundred people here, and I, I just want to read what he said uh, and to get refresh everyone's mem memory. And he simply said, Microsoft will continue to make Call of Duty and other popular Activision Blizzard titles available on PlayStation through the term of any existing agreement. Now that's kind of exactly what Phil Spencer said in his tweet, but I will continue. That commitment extends into the future, too. And we have committed to Sony, which, of course, they had conversations, uh, Phil and I'm sure Jim, that we will also make them available on PlayStation beyond the existing agreement and into the future so that Sony fans can continue to enjoy the games that they love. Now, in that conversation, ladies and gentlemen, I do not see every Activision Blizzard game coming to PlayStation. That is not what I read here. What do you think of what he had to say there, Matt? Well, I thought that was just like, okay, that's interesting, you know, because we didn't know, right? I mean, we were all kind of speculating, what's what are they going to do? You know, this is very different than the Cinemax Bethesda thing when it went down because this is 10 times yes. the size, right? It's also, if you look at the even the, the amount of employees and it, the value and everything, it, it kind of is exponentially larger than what they already had in place with even with Cinemax Bethesda and Xbox Game Studios put together already. So this is a huge transitional shift for Microsoft uh, in the gaming space period when they made this acquisition. So it's like, what's going to happen? Are, are they going to make these games exclusive or are they not? So this is pretty clear and defined now for me um, as far as what they're coming out and saying. Are they doing it only because of regulatory reasons? 
I don't know because if you go into the beginning aspects of that Brad Smith interview, that was not no nobody's actually taking the first two minutes. They're only taking that other one minute. Yes, there's a lot before that, right? <laughs> there's a lot of very very important, interesting things before that that lead to the potential future of entertainment and gaming that people are not even discussing, right? So there's more to this than just Call of Duty. There's more to this than just, you know, Destiny for Sony, right? There, there's more to this than all, all of these things that we're all focused on right now, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a future that is unfolding before our eyes that is coming faster at us than none of us anticipated accelerated potentially because of COVID and the extreme growth in gaming over the last two years has increased the rate of consolidation and investment into the gaming space. Technology yes. is catching up and pushing us further yeah. than we've ever been before, which is increasing the platform of availability of all of these big companies to reach more people. Right. right? And so none of them Mav, want to ignore this. Can I ask you a question Mav? Yes, uh, and 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 this is not me saying I, I believe one side or another, but based mm -hmm. on your statement just now, if 16, 18 months down the line, ink is dry, regulatory bodies put their eyes back in their head and they move on, and all of a sudden you find out that Warzone stays multi-plat, but the campaigns don't, would you consider that them going back on their word? No, uh, no, no. I'm, me, Mav. me personally, I, yes, I would. Yeah. Really? Uh, I, I think I they would. could get in a shit ton of trouble if they do that. Because, yeah. because no, no, because f to my understanding, like, seriously, rereading it, and, and, and I, I know how Umbra feels because I've been chatting with him as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and they said nothing new than they did before. How is this more clear than because, the other one? Because exactly. they did say, they did say, um, future games um, going forward. Uh, after, yeah, but, but after that could also mean. World Actual of Warcraft. Contract. That could mean any yes, other multi-plat game. Doesn't it mean it means Call of Duty campaign. Now, yep. and let, let me be clear before I say this, before any of the console warriors get involved, I could give two yeah. expletives if it, it's multi-plat. You'll have it in Game Pass. There's no issues. I'm just interested because people are parsing these worlds and considering this definitive and the other one vague, when to me, they both are just as vague. It's just more words in their vagaries. It, oh, I, I think, think, think this one's a bit out. bit more. There, there's more context to this yeah. because it's, okay. you know, it's not a 200 character or 280 character tweet. Mm -hmm. But this this means in, in all, you know, like when, when they say when they refer to Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. um, I can't stress this enough. When they go, Call of Duty will remain multi-platform. Yes. And you will see it on Sony's consoles, right? Mm -hmm. Those words are, are very carefully chosen. Um, and yes. when it means Call of Duty, it means the franchise. It's yeah. not Warzone. It's not... Are you this, sure about that? that? Absolutely. Because Call of Duty... Yeah. was the same Because way. Call of Duty is a franchise. Call of Duty is the franchise. Whatever yeah. Warzone or whatever new Call of Duty that comes out afterwards, those are subsets. You believe that's of, underneath the same umbrella. Is what exactly. Yeah, this is a big umbrella. And, and, and the attorney did kind of compare the the Call of Duty title to Minecraft. Yes. So, yeah, so that, he, that, he put it in the same bucket well, if see, you really think see, about and, it. And John, you're right on that. And that also lends me to think it's Warzone because that is the like the Call of Duty side of the house that is the most like Minecraft is Warzone, not the campaigns. Well, think about it like this: uh, Minecraft is again, it's a platform. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to put Minecraft. Um, what is it? The the dungeon the, the, game. Yeah, the, the RPG. Technically, one, the one they kind of yes. did, but that's a whole different conversation. And, and it's on and, it's on PlayStation. Again, Call of Duty means franchise. Sure. There's a we're bigger, bigger. Missing, yeah. uh, we're missing Mavs, the whole first two minutes. Mm -hmm. We're missing. Yeah, the you know what? Let, 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 yeah, of of this whole interview where mm -hmm. they talk about a universal platform, a yes. universal app store, right? Yes. That where they, where, where they threw my where they threw Google and Apple under the bus. Yes, yeah, that I, is what I, this is because all of those about. regulatory rule changes yeah. coming up. What yeah. they don't specify in this interview is in the means in which these games are going to be on these other platforms right mm -hmm. they are trying to create this universal platform get everybody invested into it as the means to create this one ecosystem to be able yeah. to have metaverse 
It is it is going to be up to PlayStation and all these other companies to buy into that to make this happen. They are putting this their leverage against them, and that's what this is all about. Yeah, a great point, Mav. And the one thing that we see Microsoft doing, because remember, this is the third largest acquisition in the world. All yeah. right. Yeah. It's yeah. huge and it does have big implications. We have to put in 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 perspective, Microsoft is sweetening everybody up, right? Mm-hmm. They're saying all these things that all everybody right things. wants to hear. Right. Yes. And what better way of like trying to sell your your large deal? to the government who is already looking about breaking companies like you up is like, no, 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 no. But they're like, hold up, hold up a minute. We're going to actually make an app store. Cause right now they're, they've been debating it. The whole Apple V Epic thing. We're going to actually make an app store. That's completely open. Yes. Anyone that wants to join comes in. You guys will love it. You do realize that that app store that they spot, if you if you dig into the details, not just the interview, but you can actually see it. If you dig into the details, that does not include the closed ecosystem of Xbox. Oh sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure, sure. There's going to be some back deal things. It's not, it's not, it's not. It Rainbows only includes butterflies. It's Windows and, and all the others. Yeah. But the yes. actual app store that that was that was the process of problem, the closed ecosystem that that is Xbox will still be what it always has been with its thirty three percent cuts yep. and all of that right yeah. just, just to add though to kia santi because you weren't here before but yes, me and Bo- i think me and boom and you are on the same page when it comes to that like as far as um the wording being mostly the same i wanted to read something for you all because special nick uh he spoke on it too yes and and they talked about it. he was on xbox era and he had said that he i think we're all seeing the same thing and it says we will continue to make them available which can easily be we won't pull existing titles we will also continue to make them available beyond an existing agreement. Again, we won't pull them in the future either. There's actually nothing in it that says they will never release new games on other platforms. I think it's the same thing, just worded more. Well, I and, think and to be clear oh, here, Pong, Pong's yeah, losing it. And, and to be clear yeah. here, <laughs> if they did, right? did, yeah, if I'm they here. did release it on multiple platforms, it would be fine if they it would release be fine. new games. You know what? It would be fine. It's just, on take, please people... continue the conversation because you only have 20 minutes left before sure, you sure. got to bounce for a meeting. So by sure. all means, take it away. I appreciate it. I think that people are getting, you know, I, I hear the, the council warriors are out there going, how could they give this up, this and that and the other? First of all, based on my, based on my ears, Nothing new <laughs> has been said today than what was said when Phil released this. It's the same thing. But secondly, secondly, give me your ears. If, serious, like I don't, and that's the that's Mark my Cerny perks point. up. <laughs> that's my sticking point because honestly, yeah. you know, they could have easily come out and said, "Look," and 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 to be absolutely clear, I kind of believe I, I I'm kind of on your side with this. Uh, 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 bad bit and pong and mav i'm kind of on your side you know why i'm on your side and what told me this was going to happen he is no longer the head of xbox he's the ceo of microsoft gaming which tells you xbox will still be its own thing with its own head right and if they elevate him to microsoft gaming it means they can have different wings of the gaming environment that would then be multi-platform. I yeah. I said I was arguing with Everborn about this for a while. He said, "Well, until they they show more, put more meat on the bone, it's just an org chart." But I I suspected this would happen. The reason why I'm arguing the way I am is nothing he said, nothing this interview said made anything clearer than what was said before. He just said Call of Duty. Now we're inferring that they mean the franchise, mm-hmm. but. As well, lawyers they can't will name put out, future games well, that haven't been announced yet either. As lawyers right. will infer when 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 that day happens, and it could go either way, and people go, "How could you say it?" And not, they can go, "We just said Call of Duty. We weren't particular on the franchise." Yeah, but, but as as the PR guy in the room, that's please. like me taking a loaded gun and then like shooting myself in the foot and looking like an asshole. Yeah, like like you don't do you can't do it. Like I would be like, <laughs> here's the the, re- the reason why I'm saying that that could be is because. They don't care what you and I think. They just care what they can prove to the regulatory bodies. If the regulatory sure. bodies come to you and they say, hey, you said left, but you mean right, they'll, yeah, but they the, need to be able to prove their way out of it. 
these regulatory but, bodies can go back and they they they, they can re they can re and they no, absolutely can, can re yeah. reopen can. A, 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 again if they break their they, promise yeah. and and someone tweets at Joe Biden again no, but, but before his sunshine down syndrome kicks in and he's like oh shit I gotta I gotta <laughs> go exactly tell someone point. about this that is exactly my point right I here. have lunch with him later this afternoon listen it's gonna be great the, I'm gonna the, Mr Biden my point on that is exactly they need to first prove that they went back on their word that's why these words are very carefully yeah. like constructed they're not as hey he said it's done they need to be able to prove that hey you said this but you meant but then you can came i, can back I also on. interject something that i want to throw ahead. i, I want to yeah. throw across your your, your bow uh mm. chaos Ante, that's pretty interesting to the conversation <laughs> uh and i think joe you brought this up um last week mm -hmm. head head of head of playstation jim ryan jim dance and choose ryan he would never there. lie to me in my life and he turns around and says, hey, listen, mm -hmm. FYI, we just bought Bungie, but guess what, uh -huh. ladies and gentlemen? You're not going to lose that. It's going right. to it's, it's be on everything. Yep. This is an absolute 1,000% response. That is why yep. the head lawyer from Microsoft is out there yesterday making yep. this statement. Because how does it look? That That's they're right. buying the one company and they are, they're immediate like, hey, listen, don't worry, folks. Uh, yeah. You know, why don't you get out there and let people know that I your game is going to be I put that tweet out there and people that's were true. angry saying, well, one doesn't equal the other. Uh, it has that's, nothing that's to do not with true. Call of Duty versus Destiny. I'm not saying that. It's a mm -hmm. grain of sand versus the, 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 the desert. I understand that. But what it looks like is it's your perception. direct competitor. Yeah, optics. Your yeah. direct competitor has bought something that's everywhere. And what yes. did they say? Unequivocally, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to continue to be everywhere. Please don't worry about that. That's so, what we were talking about this morning, exactly, Jay. That's right. Yes. So the regulatory bodies who normally don't pay attention to the gaming Michigas, look at what's being what's happening, right? And they expect you to explain yourself. So now the onus is on you to tell me what you're going to do because your competitor is doing this. Mm -hmm. So that's why they're out there with full-throated words, pause, Saying exactly what they said before, right? But but the difference, if you really read the verbiage that Destiny that Bungie put out in their fact sheet versus what Microsoft is saying, there's a huge difference. There is no squirming out of what Bungie said. I mean, we all agree that they may they will not squirm or that this is going multiplat or whatever. All I'm saying is based on the ver the words that Microsoft has used, squirming ability is possible. Whereas right. the Bungie side, it's Unequivocal. I See, agree. I'm, I'm like, we've learned nothing new here. Yeah, and I, I, and I, I absolutely agree with that. But here's the thing: you turn around, and and again, this, folks, we we have to get our hearts out of the conversation. Yeah. Take the, take your love for a plastic box A and just put it to the side for a second and understand that this is big business, and this is the biggest business to ever happen to gaming. Microsoft's at the head of this table, and they want to go through. Let's bring in Pong Soul because Pong's going to explode if I don't get. He's been in so much. <laughs> Pain. I've never seen so much pain in a man's face. Pong, take it, take, take it away, brother. Oh, okay, look, everyone, Saka joining us. Look at this. Nice. This is going to be party. Nice. This is going to be crazy. Uh, okay, this this conversation is not one podcast worth. This is going to go on for yes, a long time. Yeah. Here, yeah, here's the deal. Everybody's missing the big picture in a lot of ways. And I'm not talking about the panel members here. I'm talking about overall the community. Okay. The, the, the large percentage of the community, this industry is rapidly changing. Like Mav just got done saying this industry is going in a direction that we thought maybe we weren't going to see for 10, 20 years out. Okay. But this is the beginnings. These are the building blocks. Yes. Microsoft and Xbox knew that the political side of things was changing yeah the okay? climate's changing that, that, that these these regulatory what what used to be okay according to the regulatory commissions the eu is no longer going to be okay we knew Correct. this was coming xbox microsoft sony everybody in this games industry anybody associated with tech in any way shape or form has seen the writing on the wall xbox is setting themselves up for the future that this tells me that they are not done with big purchases. The acquisitions Correct. in the future True. are well coming. Said. 
And they are setting themselves up for that road so that they are positioned as one of the good guys in the tech industry. So, Pong, are you saying that Sega is still in play? Oh, I'm saying Sega go. is still in play. <laughs> I'm, saying oh. Sega, I'm saying it's all You can have them. Sonic then, sucks. He hasn't been good in decades. <laughs> Shut <laughs> you. Who gives a shit about, about a crazy tech? Tech. <laughs> Here, Look, oh. look, this is not... A, Eternal Umbra, you were on Xbox Infinite with me when I, I made the suggestion that this could possibly happen. I still said that the the that my position at that time was that it was more likely that mainline Call of Duty would go exclusive, right? I said right. that, but I also said that we have to prepare ourselves mm -hmm. for this moment that they do actually give to the regulatory commission this type of of moment where they say, look, we're not about this. And I, like I said, now that this has come out the way it has, I don't read into it. I'm not reading past it. I'm going to take this straight up because again, I don't know how a lot of this community forgot that Sony just paid $3.6 billion to keep destiny multi-plat. I don't understand how people suddenly forgot that this is not just an Xbox thing. This is not Xbox just being the ones that always give in or being kumbaya Phil again. Okay. Sure. That's not what this is about anymore. Okay. That in any way, shape, or form, this is about building for the future that they see coming, where all these tech companies are going to have to position themselves in a good light. Yes, Microsoft does have extra spotlight on them because it is a $2.5 trillion company, 2.3, whatever. Number one, number two in the world. They do have an extra spotlight on them. Do they have to do things a little bit differently than a smaller company like Sony? Of course they do. That's just the nature of the beast. Being that big, being who you were in the past when you did the Windows and Office bullying mm -hmm. tactics to get to this position, you have to, unfortunately, still deal with that past. So you have to make yourself this good guy in all of this. Right. But I took a lot of heat on Xbox Infinite for saying that. I had a lot of people push back on me, and I understand that old mentality is decades old that we have in this gaming industry. It is a system that we've all been brought up in, especially us older folks, have been brought up into this, and we learned how things work. Well, those things are no longer applicable to where this industry is going. We are now looking at something bigger. Satya, Phil, everybody has been telling it to our faces. When Satya talks about the metaverse, and I will stand on this hill. And again, I could be wrong. Metaverse. Again, I'm reading the crystal ball. There is no... You know, for sure thing, we don't know what the internal roadmap looks like for Microsoft and Xbox going forward. But when you do look at the crystal ball and you and you listen to what they're telling you, when Satya says metaverse, he is talking about one kind of open platform place where all of your entertainment comment, content, not just gaming, we're talking movies, TV, any digital purchases you're making of entertainment content is available to you through mm -hmm. one gateway. Right now, everything's segmented. If I want to go watch HBO Max, I have to go to HBO Max. When I want to go watch Amazon Prime, I have to go to Amazon Prime. When I want to go to play Xbox, I have to go to my Xbox, whether it's console or whether it's through the app. When I want to go play Sony, I got to turn on my console. Satya and Microsoft are looking at becoming the gatekeepers through Azure servers. What is their main business? Azure. They are looking to become the gate, that one gate where all of your content shows up. Yeah, you're still going to be buying from different, different ecosystems. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you're going to be able to log into one place and you're going to be able to jump from your Sony games to your Xbox games to go watch in the movie from Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. That's and what honestly, they're looking at. I hate how much I've been agreeing with Punk so lately, and it's really, <laughs> well, it's okay. di it's I, disturbing. I, I, but I also do want to say that Pong is actually people don't know this. Uh, that's not actually Punk Soul. That's just one of his NFTs. I have to jump out of here, but I will yeah. just leave with with this. Okay, Pong, I completely one hundred percent agree with you. I see that future. It is the Ready Player One future that everybody has said since they've heard the word metaverse. I completely agree with you. My only contention is the actual comments that they said recently don't make any of those needles thread. You're right, and that's probably where it's going, but what they said just now does not lead there. It's I exactly the same. It's the same there. place that they've been before. Doesn't Ooh. mean they won't do it. Doesn't mean it won't be multiplat. Doesn't mean any of that, because I hear you, because I'm a Microsoft follower as well, and I know exactly what you're talking about, and I know that's where they're going. But the words they chose yeah. in that in that interview 
are very strategic. So for those who are out there saying because of this, it means that, or be, that doesn't mean any of that. The right. the inference, the the your your knowledge and your history of of Microsoft and you seeing the tea leaves, hundred percent. I'm with you. I know that's yeah. happening. I am there with you. It's just people taking this specific statement as their victory lap or this their 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 dance of sorrow. That's where I'm like, yeah, they've said nothing new to I'm you. Like, I, right agree. Now. I agree. Although, I agree. I think it's, it's just word more. I am with you. Hundred yeah. percent. That is gonna like, happen. It, and, and Kay, I don't disagree with what hmm. you're saying about the statement itself per se, because they can't talk about future stuff because exactly. they don't right. own Activision exactly. Blizzard yet, right? So, so absolutely. But what I'm saying is, is that they are telling us without specifically because they can't legally say it. Exactly. But they are being front facing. I just don't think that people should read into it and try to. I really, I honestly it. think this should all be a wait and see approach. Correct. Like all of this, Correct. all of this could go either way still today, could, even before the comments. Of course. of course. It's a wait and see approach. And I'm loving all the people on, on, on social media who are crying or like taking victory laps. Because <laughs> then, boy, them receipts are going to come due one way or another. Right. And, like, and I, this I, is not I, any way for me. In any way it's just it's just more but, legalese to the exact same thing phil spencer tweeted a couple months ago. Yeah. let me let me jump in just really yeah, quick because i gotta I gotta run to a I'll meeting you also soon. y'all hey. see you'll see me mav we'll see you this weekend yes Love sir you guys. Okay. 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 i'll call you after this. In. so Later, just brother. really quick because i don't have a lot of time i just want to come in with this uh message to all of the xbox fans out there that took this hard stop crying <laughs> Stop um, it right now. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really like, listen, anybody who's talking about this is an L or why do you need an Xbox now? Did you think you needed an Xbox on January 17th before this was announced? Yes, they did. Did you, did you think, were you happy with the roadmap and all the studios and, 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 and the big publisher that they, they had acquired? Were you not happy with Starfield and Avowed and Fable and Hellblade 2 and all those things? Because those things still exist. But the way people you see a lot of people talking about this, like it is as though none of that existed and they weren't interested before Activision. Yeah. And if you're if you're if your only reason for being upset about this is that you wanted to, you know, see other people not get a game or you wanted to have like Twitter bragging rights. I don't know what to tell you because what are you going to feel like if the deal doesn't go through? Yeah. Right. If, if, if them saying this to regulate to a more in a more strict regulatory environment is what gets the deal done, then this is what they have to do. And if, and if, if a concession is making COD and some other service-based games still available on other platforms, then that's what it takes to get the deal done. But think about the benefits here, right? Think about all of the talent that Microsoft has now acquired. Think about all of the mm -hmm. support studios that yep. will now be able to help your favorite franchises have even more quality. Think about all the uh, new IPs that will come from this that will likely be exclusive. Think about all of the old IPs that you love that will come back that probably don't fall under that moniker of it because other games and going forward could mean anything you want it to mean. You could limit other, you could limit uh, existing contracts and beyond to Warzone if you wanted to. You, you genuinely don't know. All you need to know is that these things will come to Game Pass. And if they don't come to Game Pass, sure, I will cry right along with you. But right now, think about the long game. Think about the idea that this blog post was about signaling to the relegate re regulators the that we're one. on your right. side, yeah. right? right? That whole app store bill is something that their lobbyists likely helped write. And they're saying, we're going to adopt these things before this even becomes law, right? Because all they want to know is that the biggest deal in gaming history goes through. That's why Phil Spencer wasn't out there yesterday. It was yes, Brad Smith. That's correct. The corporate CEO, exactly. Right. Yes. This is bigger than anything Microsoft has ever done. So they are making sure 
the entire company, not just the gaming division. This is not here's seven point five billion to our gaming division. Hey, give yourself some exclusives. This is bigger than that, yes. right? So you're going to see them come out, and Brad uh, Smith does not pay attention to uh, the gaming community. That's no, not really his purview. Not. So he's not going to have. He's not going as, into spaces, <laughs> right? He's not going to have as flowery language as as Phil said. But essentially, they said the same thing. Right. So if you weren't mad at what Phil tweeted on January 20th about desiring to have things go forward, then you shouldn't be upset now. Right. This is about the deal going through. This is about them looking good. This is about them positioning themselves as protectors of the gaming industry. They want to dictate the future, Everborn. They want to be in a position to be able to sit at the table with the FTC and everybody else and speak on it, looking like the good guys who want to welcome everybody with open eyes. Apple and Google look like the – and Amazon look like the bad guys. 100%. Guess what? They're totally on board because, again, they they helped write this bill. They're lobbyists anyway. They're totally on board with this because no one uses the Windows Store. They don't care if they take a smaller cut. Yeah, but what they will too. gain Good if point. they get Activision, guess what? Imagine if this deal allows them to bring their own payment system into iOS and Android. What do they sell in iOS and Android? Office products that come with the subscription that anyone that originates in those app stores, they have to get 30% of. Imagine yeah. if that cut goes down to 15%. How many billions does that net them just from a lowered uh, app store uh, 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 rate? Right. And then that's before you add in all the money that King makes from app stores and they're only getting 70 percent. What if that was 85 percent now? What if it was 100 percent because they could use their own payment system? These are the things that they're trying to get done. They're not worried about giving us Twitter bragging rights. And let me ask you, if you if you've been gaming on the Xbox ecosystem for a while, and you came from the 360 generation where sales were neck and neck. And part of that was due to Call of Duty and the exclusive maps that they had that you would get early, right? When that switched over to the PlayStation, how many people left Xbox to go to PlayStation? A lot. So, uh, so on when, at least half, half of the so, community. So when the yes. marketing rights revert back, and when people have a clear distinction of this is the premier place to play Call of Duty, yep, and people know, hey, you're going to pay $70 for it here, or you're going to come here and play it in this thing. What does that do? You don't always have to catch people with vinegar. You can yeah, yeah. catch them with honey as well. Yeah. How about they're coming to your, assist, your ecosystem because they want to be there as opposed to so, sort of forcing them by locking out these things. And again, this doesn't even necessarily mean that mainline CODs will come. We just don't know. Since when do we trust the suits, right? It is funny that we decide when and when we want to believe what they're saying. You That 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 interview that he did, that Brad's, uh, I, I keep saying Brad Sams, but it's Brad Smith. <laughs> Brad did, Smith, yeah. That, <laughs> that interview that Brad Smith did with CNBC and the blog post was all self-serving. Yes, right? 100%. All oh, to make yeah. themselves 100%. look like the good guy. So again, these are not nice people. They're not worried about poor PlayStation fans. I yeah, when he's talking you, about when he's talking, <laughs> sorry to cut you off. When he's talking about Activision Blizzard, you can tell he has no idea what these things are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. None. Right, what did right. they acquire? You know what is this? Yeah. At, at, at one point, everyone, everybody could experience add, the Activision Blizzards. <laughs> to, add, to add to what you're saying, Everborn, another thing that I'll say is that th- I think people are not realizing one thing that's so clear as day in front of my eyes. Right. Microsoft now, all all of those PlayStation players that play Call of Duty, guess what? Now they're Microsoft customers. They have automatically converted those Sony players into Microsoft customers. So all the bragging rights and everything that everyone's looking for, oh, why didn't you guys pull it from PlayStation? No, we we, we just enhanced our ecosystem. We just added more players into our user base. And that's something that I think that a lot of people are forgetting. Yeah, and 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 that's an important point. But and again, 
I get that you have the hardcores that no matter what, they would rather pay seventy dollars than go to um, the subscription. I, see, I saw some posts they, yesterday that made me scratch yeah, but, my but, head. But, man. but yeah, those yeah. most of those people are lying. Yes. Right. If if there's a movie you can watch right now on Netflix, and you know you can watch it today, do you then go and buy it on iTunes if you can watch it on Netflix? Nope. How many people no. do that? Nobody. Nobody. Right. Does that. And Nobody and this is. The I, am I the only one? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. no. But do what that, I'm Joe. saying is, what I'm I feel saying if is, I really like it, if it's like Spider Man, I, I like if it's Spider Man, I buy lead, the Blu-ray. Sure. No, I, I buy it is, on iTunes and I and like if it's on Netflix, I'll watch it on Netflix. I'm a dumb piece of shit, you guys. You don't understand. <laughs> you buy the 4K UHD that comes with the digital code. You use the digital code. You watch it once in 4K UHD. Then you sell that thing on eBay. Right. And then right. No. <laughs> and, and again, the, the, the point is most people will actually just go where they hear the biggest game, game in consoles is there in this thing. Right, they're going to pull over enough people just from the fact that it's in Game Pass. And again, one, let's be clear, it doesn't matter as long as it's coming to Game Pass, but again, yep, there's so many other benefits here. Yeah, right. Ever and want to add I, to your point too? I mean, you have the the Series S, which boom pointed out again is the Trojan horse. Of course, if you have the if you're a casual and you're coming into the next gen and you have your favorite series being this this Call of Duty or 2K, and you see that it's over here in Game Pass for this low monthly price, and you can get the Series S for that low price. Of course, the the, the decision is almost made for you. They're Listen, gonna sell I, their I, PlayStation Fours. They're probably gonna potentially move over here because again, for we got to remember what he's what, what Umber's talking about. Eighty percent of the gaming market, folks, are the normies. Man, take that into account. The casual audience is what propelled Sony to win and literally curb stomp the entire generation last year because they had the Facts. cool system. They had cool games. They have Spider-Man. They had movie-like games. Those, those movie-like games are coming to Xbox. But along with those movie-like games that are going to be exclusive, they're going to have a ton of other games, really popular games that are in there that are going to be in the service for $15 a month. And if you think that those same normies who don't really know much about nothing when it comes to video games, except for the two or three actual titles they buy per year and three uh, two out of the three are in Xbox game pass. They're going to be like, wait a second, I'm paying 76 bucks for this call of duty when I can just trade my console in. Cause you know, they're going to have some sort of deals. It's 250 bucks. Game pass is how much for three months, a dollar. They're going to be moving over in droves, folks. The same group of people that left Xbox to go over to Sony because they it was more powerful. It was cheaper. Timmy's it, mom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we have to also take into account that, you know, services are the norm now. People have Hulu. People have Netflix. People want to watch what they want to watch on their favorite brand, and they know about these services. Xbox Game Pass is going to be in that conversation, and when you can turn around and say, hold on, I can get my son or daughter this small Xbox. It doesn't take up a lot of room. It's 250 bucks, and I can get all these games, and I don't actually have to shell out of my pocket 60 exactly. and 70 bucks. But listen, yeah, this listen. is this is this has so many ra and, ra ramifications. We could be here for four hours. One more thing, I just want to say, right? Like, and I and this needs to be very clear. Your feelings do not matter if the deal gets blocked. Yes. <gasps> you, Correct. You, you no, uh, no, uh, no, Phil Spencer's my friend. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, what, yeah. what difference does it make that, you, okay, so you're watching some PlayStation guys who are now uh -oh. exposing that they care about uh, soon-to-be Xbox IP, yeah. right? So, so they're celebrating right now. Why, what difference does that make? If you have to deal with that in order for the deal to get closed, what is the problem? Or would you rather you get to celebrate now to say, ha, look at you, these are exclusive, and then the deal gets blocked? Is that what you prefer? Yeah, right. that's a great yeah. point. It's very interesting that people are really celebrating this on the on sides anyway, yeah. right? Like Because people are still <laughs> stuck in that mentality. It's, it's a box versus a box. And the more things you have on this box means this box is better. And the more things you have on that box 
means that box is better. But it's, when they made this acquisition, right, they said uh, – they themselves said immediately this is about meta. It's about the future. Yeah. They keep saying that. They keep reiterating this. They keep saying that. Nobody's listening, right? Nobody's listening or paying attention because we're stuck in this world that we've been in for, like Pong said, for decades. And we can't see beyond that because – we don't know what the future holds, right? Yeah. The, the tech is pushing that, though. They are pushing it. This deal is not about boxes. No. Uh, PlayStation yeah. themselves, Joe, even said. What did Jim Ryan say, uh, J- uh, Joe? He said, we're starting to things. go multi He said, I want this money. Yes. He said, I don't and care about things. Have to... We have multi-platform. We have an aggressive roadmap with live services right and the me. opportunity yes. to work with and particularly learn from the brilliant and talented people from Budgie that is going to considerably accelerate the journey we find ourselves in. Yeah. They immediately say they have 10 live service games uh, slated up to 2026. Yeah. And look, I mean, real talk, Mav. Real talk, and, and this is the last point, and then I gotta go, guys. So it's been fun, you know, where to find me. The trophy room this week, we talk about, we talk a lot about this, actually. And if you're an Xbox fan, I think you're gonna even enjoy it as well. Um, but uh, honestly, math, like 110% right. So, like, th- this has accelerated things exponentially. You know, yes, the whole 100%. COVID situation has, has, has done what, what we knew Sony would eventually do but do it a whole lot sooner. And I think what people are missing out, it's, 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 it's a, you know, the same quote we'll throw around constantly. It's not about consoles. It's about content and where you're able to get that content matters. Look at Disney plus, look at uh, Netflix, look at Hulu, all these competing services. It's all about what show is on right now. What show will be on right now. That's what it's, what, what, what is important and getting you locked in that service once that show's over, I got Disney Plus for a whole nother year. Why? Because I know Moon Knight's coming out next month, yes. and I'm gonna stick with it because I know uh, you know uh, you know Obi Wan is next. Right. So that's the thing that people lose sight on. I can guarantee you, and I'm ready to put the clown mask on when PlayStation purchases that publisher because you know they weren't given eighty eighteen billion dollars for nothing. That publisher is gonna be multi plat. They're not yeah. gonna touch it. It's gonna be a vertical slice. It, because they're because these businesses are smart they want to survive because they know at the end of the day they need to make this app so that you can play all that stuff here for the sake of convenience yes people are losing sight of that because they swore some allegiance to a box because an executive was on stage one time and said a really great thing and we lose tr- sight on what's truly important what you're playing what games we're, we're enjoying, the developers that make them. I will easily post a Halo Infinite tweet one minute and in a, in a Horizon you know, tweet the next because it's all about the games and the people that make them. That's mm-hmm. all what this is. Yeah. That's all what it should be. I don't I don't give a shit if I, I'm sorry. I keep on cursing. I'm sorry, Boom. I, That's all right. I keep That's dropping fine. the S. I don't care if I'm playing on a DualSense or, or an Xbox controller or even a mouse and keyboard from time to time. Shouldn't matter. And soon... It won't matter. Yeah, now I care thing. about who's not getting what. <laughs> That's right. Know. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> but everybody, sure you can't enjoy your day, brother. Thanks for joining Later, us, man. Later, y'all. Bye-bye. Later, Have a good one. Bad bit. All right, so real quick, before I let everyone, everyone how, much, how much time you got? I got I got, I got to 1.30. Okay, let me just read the R Super Chats, and we'll get your opinion on this. Um, um, RDM in the chat drops a $5 Super Chat and says, agreed with the panels. However... In the past, mixed messaging was costly for Xbox. If the narrative of Xbox going multi-platform intensifies, it could be costly. I, I, I don't. I appreciate the generosity, but there's that there there is no proof that everything is going multi-plat. There, they they clearly said that they're going to have Call of Duty and and and, and other. They said use the word other. Activision Blizzard titles will come to PlayStation. If, let's say, for instance, they pull Moon Studios off of Call of Duty finally, and they go in and make uh, the next Transformers, is that going to be on PlayStation? Probably not. If Toys for Bob decides that, hey, listen, we're going to do a Crash uh, 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 Banjo crossover because that's what the people are asking for, and that's how you're going to get your new Banjo, is that going to be on, on PlayStation? The answer is no, it's not. So, again, we have to take our heads out of the sand here and stop looking at just it being Call of Duty. This deal is not a Call of Duty deal. This has 
a ton of layers. And yes, is Call of Duty front facing? Absolutely, but it is not the end all. And, and again, I will say this to you, and if you would disagree, call me a big D bag. That's fine. It <laughs> shouldn't matter to you if you are an Xbox player that uh, that PlayStation gamers get to play and continue to play of call of duty it shouldn't matter to you because you are winning if you support xbox game pass it's a spec. 15 dollars versus 76 43 in new york i don't understand why we can't un under understand that but let me continue with the super chats and we'll get john in here as well uh, we have quite a few of them let me see if I can get this chat is, is on fire. We, folks, we got almost 600 people here. Hit the like button if you don't mind. And if you're new, consider subscribing to the channel. We have the Owl Man drops a five hour super chat and says, If future Call of Duty games go multi platform, why can't Spider Man and Wolverine go multi platform? Sony doesn't own those IPs and the media won't bring it up. You know what? Here's the thing we, we don't know if those conversations are happening, right? <laughs> We don't. We can't definitively say that Spider Man will never be on an Xbox. What if there's a there's a you know you gotta understand the importance of Call of Duty to PlayStation and Jim Ryan is mammoth. Okay, it's their number one selling game on PlayStation and makes them the most money every year for the last seven plus years okay whether that's the ps4 or the ps5 you don't know if there's not conversations hey listen man you know the call of duty we got gotcha, you but you know we kind of want something on the back end may, may, maybe a conversation with sony and marvel saying because i've always i've always believed that the sony marvel situation where you haven't seen any marvel characters on xbox is is literally blocked by Sony because of the sharing deal with with Spider Man. I think yeah. that's a lot to do with it. Even though it's not gaming, it's it's still a part of the conversation. Maybe that's kind of relieved a bit. Hey, Boom, Sony, can listen. I, can I jump in on it a bit? Sure, sure, sure. Jump in. So the thought process behind it is it's also just characters. Now they're major characters, well known, beloved characters, but they're not some type of big publisher. It's not it's not it's apples and oranges for one. Two, it's like you just alluded to, more than likely Sony worked out some type of deal and probably had like a little, you know, agreement with Marvel as far as saying, Hey, you can keep my you know, keep Spider Man over there in MCU. But you know, we want to have this over here. We want to kind of build a, our own MCU on Sony. Would you be fine with that? You think Marvel was going to turn it down when Spider-Man was so 20 million plus? Yes. Of course not. Of course, they're going to be OK with that. So right. what that's that's a different type of deal right there. So all yeah. it is. And I think it, it just comes down to Xbox gamers kind of feeling like we should have our own thing, too. And we kind of can. I think you look at Raven uh, Software, who we have now yes. on the Xbox side of things. I mean, who's to say they couldn't make another X-Men Legends? You know, Indeed. Yes, yeah, not getting the license. No, no, so, absolutely. Uh, I, real I quick, think, uh, go uh, ahead. Every, Sorry. No, everyone, I, I want you to take this comment because this is interesting. This is right up your alley. Uh, this comes from Mur uh, Murkova. He says you can't expect people to buy a five hundred dollar console to save money with Game Pass. People spend money on a given console because of the games that can be played. They are not how much the games cost. That is entirely wrong. You're telling me that you can get the same game on system A versus system B, which is five times. Let's just let's understand the math here. For 7643 Call of Duty, you can spend that on the PlayStation, but you can get five months of Xbox Game Pass with Call of Duty and a gazillion other titles. I think you're incorrect when you say that, but everyone continue. So again, I think we got to get to the root of why people are are, are saying this. Right. Uh, most times it's not about what they say it's about. It's about I want to hurt these PlayStation guys because that's they heard exactly correct. Year. That is that is at the and crux of the let's, conversation. Let's indeed. call a spade yeah. a spade. But 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 again, right, like the so this whole thing, no one, I don't care who you are, no one before three weeks ago ever thought Activision was on the table. No one did. No Everyone one did. Who, who says that they were a huge Xbox fan, right? Unless they didn't start becoming an Xbox fan until two weeks ago. Everyone <laughs> was fine with the direction they were going. They loved that Bethesda was a purchase. They loved that Starfield was exclusive mm -hmm. and Redfall was exclusive and Elder Scrolls Six will be exclusive. 
All of that was fine. And they said Xbox was headed for a new day and they were going to win the generation and they were happy with the direction. So three weeks ago, Activision was multi-plat and you felt like Xbox had a good plan. $70 billion later and now... Uh, Xbox has shit. That's basically right. what you're saying. <laughs> what, what, were, were you a fan of Xbox before or not? Right. This is the question you 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 really have to ask yourself. And again, no one again, hardcore people are going to do what hardcore people do. But if you think that most people love PlayStation as much as you do, that they're going to go out and spend the seventy six dollars or a hundred dollars in Canada when they know this thing is available in. in inside of this subscription service along with doom and halo and forza and fable and 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 um and avowed, avowed and all too. these other things perfect dark all these things they're gonna say no i don't want that it's it it, it really it it doesn't make sense at least it doesn't make sense for for the casual gamer they, right? It's that it's that everborn. People want that instant gratification, right? That that's what I think that it kind of boils down to. Because I've seen a lot of posts on on Twitter stating, "How does this benefit Xbox gamers at all?" You know, uh, wh where's the instant gratification here? Where are the bragging rights? Where all that? Wh wh where's all that stuff? It's and a validation that, of your purchase. Y yeah, right. and yeah. and I, I think, think that's that a false narrative. Th it but is. there it is, and they're completely missing the point. They're, they've completely missed the whole point of the purchase and because they they think that that Microsoft just woke up with this opportunity and said yeah let's stick it to those PlayStation fans that's the last thing that was on their mind right and that's the thing like this is not about this is not about your feelings and this wasn't even in Microsoft's roadmap before let's say October or September so true. When Activision came to them barefoot and hungry after Facebook turned them down, <laughs> Sega right? was on their roadmap. Everborn, it still is. Push it. It still <laughs> is not. <laughs> right? I know. So, hey, so I agree with you, the, but I'm just saying they had to push. And, and, this I, is I, the, and listen, baby. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If they do get a Capcom or a Sega, it's probably going to be multiplat. You know why? Because there's no real presence for Xbox in Japan, and unless you want a mass exodus of devs to leave. The, the studio or publisher that you just purchased, they're going to want to make games uh, on ecosystems where people are. So if they were making Switch and PlayStation games before, they're probably going to allow them to do that because that is what will get the deal done. And we're going to have to accept that. But again, what is the benefit here is that you now have this talent inside the Xbox ecosystem that, again, you can lend your services to, you can lend your dev support and money to, to green light new projects, and they can help your other projects. This wins all around. It isn't just and about Everborn. that. And Everborn, Amazon, Tencent, Facebook, Google, whoever can't get their hands on that talent. Yeah. Right. Long run. And, yeah. But again, but again, would you, and, and this is the thing, they didn't spend the $70 billion yet, right? So everybody, everybody that's upset, would you rather the deal get blocked? No. <laughs> Right, just, the, just so you can, just so you can say, I have, just so you, they can claim that they have exclusivity, and that's what they call a, a what a fire right. victory and, is. And, and if if the if the deal gets blocked, yep. you are back where you were January seventeenth. And who's going to pay the seventy billion going forward? Right, because that means Activision still going to be on the block. And no, what Ooh. would happen is their stock price would tank. If right. this deal doesn't go through, right. their stock prices is, is still holding at seventy nine dollars a share. Guess what? Microsoft's paying ninety five dollars a share. Now, if you're any sort of savvy investor, if you're buying stock, you say to yourself, hold on a minute. This thing is this thing is guaranteed yes. at ninety five dollars a share. I could buy it at eighty dollars a share and make fifteen dollars a share just like that. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't I do that? Because some investors are scared that the deal won't go through. There is a non-zero chance that this deal gets approved. Does Microsoft want to risk that? Absolutely not. And, and should you pay attention 
to Brad Smith, whose number one job is to get the deal closed. Correct. Versus um, Phil Spencer, who's in tune with the community. Right. Their job is to close the deal. That is, keep your eyes on the prize, people. Yes. Yeah. You want I, 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 I think that that in itself is the problem. What, what you know? I, at the end of the day, people get in their fields, and it has to be black or white, left or right, or up or down. And that's not the what this this deal is so much bigger than that. Like I said, there you go. I, I get aggravated as a, 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 AF because I keep hearing Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call of Duty. Take your freaking head out of the sand. Be be an adult here for a second. So, you know, take the Pampers off, put on the big boy shorts, and let's be an adult here. Okay. Hey, boom, boom. Yes, Why are you not mad? You don't take Candy Crush off for of iOS and Android. You take it what? off. It should <laughs> be right exclusive. Off. It should Put be it on Xbox. Xbox. That is correct. <laughs> yes. What are we talking I hope about, people? Achievements pop. It, it's I, I don't Tasty. know. I mean, well, listen, folks. Uh, I want to get John in here. I want to let everyone get their final points on on, on it. But I, I, but I have to catch him some of the super chats. Uh, Dakato drops a five dollar super chat and says, "In my humble opinion, Steam slash Valve is the long game down the road. Multiplat a ABK uh, playing nice is the first true test against regulators. Indeed, it is. Again, this is a, this is a stepping stone to a much larger." uh microsoft you gotta understand when this deal is done look, look what phil told the public in that interview for activision blizzard when we got done when the deal was signed with um bethesda you know what the board told phil who's next goldberg style we're ready <laughs> Who, that's right who's next and when this deal gets signed and it's going to get signed because they're doing all the right things the, the, the board that just made billions and billions of dollars is going to say, okay, who's on the table next? That Who do fills we add? a gap that we don't have. Yes. And I think that's the Eastern market. And I think that's uh, Sega or Capcom. <laughs> but, you know, Correct. That's, that's, there yep. you go. Well, I, I, lean, I lean toward Capcom personally. I, I, I say Capcom over Sega. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> well, born. listen, to, to the Capcom point, um, you know my love affair with Sega, but um, – it seems like the purchases that they're making are very sort of we don't we want to get the best there is. Yes. And if mm -hmm. they go to Japan, maybe they are looking at a Capcom because it's going to give them is, more. Is, is the but, best in the region but, of all of them. Yeah. The only other but option I, to me would be Bamco. Yeah, Namco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they I think they can wrestle away, not wrestle away, but convince bandai to give them their to sell their uh gaming division namco so keep the anime bandai and mm -hmm. um we'll we'll take the gaming arm Heck, take and both we'll take and and give us anime, and all those things take both that's why i say bamco take the bandai I, and namco I, give us anime inside of uh game pass <laughs> i don't i don't think they want that because th if that's the case they would have went after wb which they could have bought for the money they're paying for activism Ooh. Who says who says they're not? Who everybody? says they're not? That's right. That's absolutely correct. Uh, real quick, Hitman uh, drops a two dollars super chat and says Microsoft buys Disney for Meta calling uh, buys Disney uh, for Meta calling it now. Uh, yeah, they're not buying Disney, but I, I see I see your point. Oh, we have a wow, we have a twenty dollars super chat coming in from Wolf of Darkness, good friend of the show. He says, "What's up, Boom? Great panel." I need everyone to understand Xbox owns owners and X and Game Pass subscribers will always have the advantage, even if Call of Duty releases on the PlayStation. One uh, uh, exclusive content, uh, uh, two early access, and three Xbox Game Pass. Indeed, I mean that's that that's that's complete facts. And of course, thank you for the extreme and generosity. The talent people are forgetting about yeah. the talent and the, ta the new the IPs, which is what everybody says are they want. Ridiculous. Yeah, remember we went we went from Xbox has no no games pong to Xbox has too many goddamn games, and I don't have enough time in a day to play them. <laughs> um, Exclusives are not going away, people. No, they they, they are certainly happening. not. You're not going to see yeah, well, Fable on PlayStation. <laughs> you're not going to see, you know, it's not what's there. happening here. There's you're still going to be to that, each that, That's another problem, I think, with all of this. We keep dumbing everything down to think, oh, it has to be all this one thing. All, yeah, right? all, People think yeah, the entire business nothing. model is Game Pass when it's not because they're also selling microtransactions and supporting other platforms and licensing out things. 
and there's TV, movie, all those things are involved in their business model, but all people read it is as it has to all be Game Pass, as though they're not doing other things. Right. And is it possible mm -hmm. that while maybe COD and Overwatch 2 and Diablo and Warcraft will be multi-platform because they're service-based games, they'll mm -hmm. also do exclusive content as well? Is yeah. that not possible? Yeah, right. can well, we can we walk yeah. and chew gum at the same time? <laughs> yes, or does everything it's has to also just be possible. distilled down to this binary choice. It's Everyone, ridiculous. it's also possible that they could listen. They can also make Call of Duty six month exclusive if they wanted to. A year exclusive, for that matter. A year. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's and also the a way they can do it. Yesterday does not say anything otherwise. All they need to really do is just flip everything on its head and say, "Hey, you want to play the beta for the new Call of Duty? It's on Game Pass." Yes. Yeah. Listen, Good you point. know how many millions of people they will pull over just if there's an early map? Right. Yeah. Even if you did a day and date PlayStation release, but you get guns and maps first on Xbox. You well, know, that's, that's, we, that's we've probably what's that going to happen. And, and, and they're going to incentivize that by saying, hey, if you're an Xbox Game Pass, besides the great games, besides the great price, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know, your, 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 your you know, smorgasbord of I, I can eat everything in one place. <laughs> Every month, you're going to get new stuff for the hottest games. You're going to get Halo stuff. You're going to get Call of Duty stuff. You're going to get uh, you, you name it. It's going to be in there. It's going to be the bonus content. All you got to do is download it. Hey, I got this new skin. I got this new gun. Uh, we're getting maps early. It, it, there, there's, there's a lot to be done here where they don't have to necessarily keep it, quote unquote, exclusive to make people come over. And like I said, I, I think the old adage, uh, Pong, and I want to go to you next one, is, and we'll bring John Wolf in, in the back end of exclus of, of, of exclusivity. It, 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 it's not the same term anymore. There's a lot to be said here. I've said this before. I don't know if people agree with me or not. The real exclusive for Xbox isn't their titles. It's Xbox Game Pass because if you are an Xbox supporter, you're getting this smorgasbord of games for the price of $15 a month when all every other competitor is not doing the same thing. Will Sony get there? I, I honestly don't know what their, you know, their, their project, whatever, is going to look like. It could be terrible. And, you know, they had that, that, that screenshot that leaked that day and day games are not on there. Well, that's a big epic fail if that, in fact, is the case. And I think that this deal forces them to do that, to be honest. But, Pong, add your, add your final point on this, on what Brad, uh, Brad Smith had to say. Two to three billion people are not reached through the old methods. You're correct. Okay? They, they said that flat out that that's their goal. People laughed. People rolled their eyes. People said it was a joke. I don't know how much cold water has to be poured over some parts of this community to understand that this industry is changing. Humans don't like change. I get it, right? I've seen things that I love change through the decades that I no longer enjoy, right? But at the end of the day, gaming in the future is about reaching that two to three billion and having accessibility for all, okay? No matter where you play, no matter what you play. And that's what this is about. Kumbaya Phil was not lying back in the day where he wanted to gather the game industry together and have everybody be able to enjoy the content, the entertainment that these unbelievable creative people are putting out for everyone. And he does not like the lock system. And Microsoft sees as a business model, an opportunity. Back in the day, they were the bullies. They now have an opportunity to be the good guys, to usher in the new future of gaming. And they're going to drag everybody along or at least make the attempt as the leaders towards this future. They're going to drag people along. That's Sony, that's Amazon, that's the Apples, that's everybody. But they're going to do it in a different fashion than they used to, yep. right? Because they have to, because the regulation has changed and is continuing to change right now. So they are putting their best face on and they are smiling all the way at the end of the day. Can they still be the dominating factor in all this industry? Absolutely. Is that their goal? Absolutely. But they don't want to dominate by force of will. They want to dominate by goodwill this time around. And they're going to change the perception that people have of them. And I understand that it's very hard when it comes to exclusives. It's been pounded into our head. Exclusives is what sells exclusives is what sells. And to a certain degree, you are correct that that is still not going away. These ecosystems will still have their exclusive games. Yep. But Microsoft, 
Microsoft, the corporation, is looking to create a metaverse in which all your entertainment content is available in one place. It doesn't matter where you're buying it from. They want to be the gateway to that. And that does, again, it does not mean that it's just going to be one big Yo, one big place where everybody just puts everything all the time. No, there's going to be a lot of, going to be a lot of change throughout that that we see that happening. But that's really what they're looking for here, and people are still going to be making exclusives. Yes, we have to come to grips with the idea that eventually down the road in the future, consoles will be obsolete. Okay, that this will be a digital universe. I'm not saying that happens next gen. I'm not saying that happens two gens from now. But I'm saying at some point, that's where this is headed. And yep. everybody, everybody will basically be a third-party publisher at that point. From Sony to Nintendo to Xbox, it doesn't matter. But the key is, who's going to be the one that gets all of that content in one place? Microsoft is positioning themselves to be that one-stop shop. Yep. And that's what this is about here. So again, I understand it's hard for everybody. You still have a choice. If you don't like the direction of Xbox, if you don't like this, if you think there's no point in owning an Xbox, guess what? You have the option to go buy Sony. Okay. You have the option to go buy Nintendo. You have the option to buy both of them. You have the option to buy a PC for God's sakes and play almost everything there. Yep. So again, those options are still available to you, right? That that's okay. You don't have to get all upset in your feelings about everything all the time. Go make your choices. That that is there for us. Xbox is simply and, trying and, to make the choice. You, you know what? You know what, Pong? Yeah. If yeah. they if let them go kick rocks, right? Let them go buy a PlayStation because <laughs> that's right. what they wanted in the first go place. Kick, go right. kick and rocks. Then, Hashtag, and then rocks. they'll we be back. Continue to enjoy Halo right. and Forza and Fable and Fallout and uh, uh, Starfield and Star Red Starfield Ball and Vow and, yeah, and but, all but those I, I got things. A question. Those yeah. people yeah. that are gonna do that, Everborn. What are they going to say when the same thing happens over there? Because they've already announced that as well. Yeah. Right. Right. Th exactly. Then they'll come back. Exactly. Because and guess you, what? Yeah. It's not a secret club. No. You can just go not. to a store I'm and you can option. buy a council. It's choice. Again, you don't have to join Game Pass. If you like buying your games, buy your games. It's still available yep. to you. Go spend the money. Go spend the money. The rest of us are just sitting here simply kind of trying to forecast what the future looks like and what yes. this deal means is again, those first big steps. And guess what? For you Xbox fans out there who are bleeding green right now, this is not the demise of Xbox. This, listen to me, I could be totally wrong about this stuff. Again, we're projecting, we're projecting out into the future. But this tells me they are not done with these big purchases. That there is, is more content coming point. in. Yes. Is, they are setting themselves up to be the good guys. So when all this stuff comes under review, they are not looked at like the evil people who are trying to destroy the gaming industry like we've seen. People come out and try to say is happening. They are trying to be what they want to be, which is the which is a welcoming spot for all of gaming. And that includes Sony, that includes Nintendo, that includes PC, that includes mobile, that includes everybody. And they want to be that all-encompassing, open arms, welcome to our family. That's By what the they way, want to be. I'm I'm learning that a lot of people that were excited about E3 this year and saying it was the best show they've ever done and they're super hyped for the future of Xbox, they were lying. Right, because now Xbox doesn't mean anything, even though all that stuff is still coming. Right. They actually weren't hyped before; they were just jealous of what what Sony had. There's a lot of that. right. There's a lot of egos wrapped up in plastic boxes that have become a part of who they are, and that's what they've kind of wrapped themselves around. And that's who we hear from a lot. It's, it's a minority. Yeah. It's not yeah. a big. It's not a big fan club, yeah. but they're out there, and also, it comes from both sides. So also, it's everywhere. Let yep. me ask you guys this. How easy is it going to be for Sony to secure some of these timed exclusives that they've been securing in this new world Correct. where Microsoft is holding all the nukes? Correct. And that's right? what I said. You, that's what I said. It makes those third parties really scratch their heads and say, is it worth it to do these timed exclusives anymore? Is it no. really going to be no, worth it? No, it's, it's not going to be. It's it, going to get more expensive as well it's for them. Gonna, yes, yes. Do that. great point. Great point. <laughs> right. Listen, let me let me bring in uh, John Wolf in the conversation, and then we will uh, get everyone out of here. I'll read the rest of the Super Chats, and obviously we'll talk about what's going on tonight for PM in the PM. John. 
You've heard what everyone had to say. You've dropped some incredible points yourself. Uh, the future of Xbox is not on fire. Uh, it, it, it is not doom and gloom with Xbox. I think mm -hmm. that Call of Duty can exist on multiple platforms, but the 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 card here, the up to sleeve, the the, the wow. ace of the ace up your sleeve, so to speak, is Xbox Game Pass. And yep. I know that there are a lot of people arguing the fact that, well, I'll go spend the money. Well, then you go and spend your seventy six forty three like a knucklehead. If if, if you <laughs> if you if, if what all you have, see, that's the other thing. If we start bringing into the conversation, John, that money is an issue, I can't afford. I can't afford to go out and support two consoles. I hear you. But you can't afford not to uh, acknowledge that the better deal in gaming right now is Xbox. And hey, whether, boom. Yes, sir. Boom. Can I add a point? Sure. I have a sneaking suspicion, and I could be wrong. But the Venn diagram of people who claim to have $3,000 PCs and people who claim that they will buy Call of Duty for $70 when they know they can get it in Game Pass is probably a circle. And how many of those people actually had those PCs that they claim they had? Yep. I, I would wager none. Probably, so, I, I, would, I would say the percentage is probably very low. Some food for thought. That's it. John, take it away, brother. Let me hear what you got to say. Yeah, I think that everybody's uh, thoughts on, on obviously this this megaton topic is has been beautifully articulated all the way from Punk Soul and Mav. Mav, how you doing, by the way, buddy? Good to see you. What's again. up, man? It's good to yeah, see you. man. So so I think that it's been so well articulated from looking at the overall aspect of the deal, right? I think Pong and Mav, you beautifully articulated your thoughts around it, and it makes perfect sense. And it's exactly I agree one hundred percent with everything that you guys have said. That's the overall. Uh, game plan here and and i also like how how everborn broke it down kind of to the twitter streets level to to kind of inform all, all these fake fans as i'll call them that get your get your you know feelings in check because everyone that's saying that this does not benefit xbox gamers you completely missed the boat all right you you guys completely missed the point of this whole deal so the 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 thing is is that uh, where where I do have a little bit of concern for Microsoft, and I don't and I haven't heard anybody mention this yet, is going forward because I do agree with Pong also that there will be more acquisitions. They're laying the floor, the foundation for that. They're they're making it seamless as Pong mentioned, so that when these future acquisitions come in, it's it kind of you know it kind of just becomes a ABC step process right for them. Um, I, I am concerned with their messaging revolving around exclusivity. I think that it's something that they kind of struggled with with Bethesda. Um, and, and, I, and I understand why. You know, it, right now it's not a closed deal. They can't guarantee things. They can't put things in writing or anything like that. But going forward, okay, and with Microsoft's history, I think that they really need to focus on the messaging and how they communicate to their customers uh, uh, that topic around exclusivity because it's a very sensitive one. It's a very sensitive yeah, one. Yeah, you know, and, and, and yeah, I, John, I, I I agree with you there. But you also have to understand that they 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 are in in a box right now. And, yeah. and the minute this deal is signed, the week later we'll be having a, a, a podcast to talk about what they said in their round circle Absolutely. and see what they did. Absolutely, and I do think that they are going to address it because they proven they proved that they proved that with Bethesda. The moment that that deal closed, Starfield exclusive. I, I believe the same thing's going to happen with, with the Activision. All of a sudden, yep. Starcraft Ghost exclusive. You know, just throwing that out there. But uh, yeah, those are my. I mean, there's so much to cover here, Boom. But I'm not going to take up too much time, Boom. Thank you again for the invite. Uh, everyone's thoughts. Thank you so much for adding and 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 you know, I, it really made me think deep about this topic more than just what you see on the Twitterverse, and I thank you all for your thoughts. Yeah, well, thanks so much for being here, brother. But real quick, before we get everyone out of here and we get your final thoughts on it, uh, Pixelbit G drops a very generous $2 super chat and says, EB, you're wrong. Bethesda is no longer exclusive. So I must have missed that. That that was a while ago, so I probably missed the context of what he meant. Um, Laburn98 drops a $5 super chat and says, with the rumors that Chip shortages will continue for many years to come. Once COD is, cur is, is, uh, is current gen only, the Series S will be primed as the Call of Duty box. That is a great point indeed for sure. 
Um, let's see. We also have, uh, first of all, big shout out to Lethal Papa, keeping these streets safe with the near 600 people we have here. The reason why we have such a friendly chat that we can have disagreements and still have a great conversation is because he carries a very large stick, pause, and walks very silently. So big shout out to you, Lethal. Uh, Splendiferous, good friend of the community and good friend of this show. He drops a two dollars super chat and he says in all caps, "I'm with Everborn. Bring Sega home. Been too long." <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and Danny Passion official drops a two dollars super chat and says, "But Game Cat Game Pass will become the standard place to play." Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent, absolutely. Uh, Gameonomics has become a new channel member. Well, thanks so much for that, dude. Definitely appreciate you becoming a channel member, Raul Martinez. Um, C in the chat drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says the IPs alone are great. Imagine a Call of Duty Halo Doom Quake crossover game if they add more IPs, more potential games. Yeah, they, you're gonna see all kinds of stuff like that. I would not, wouldn't even remotely be surprised if at some point you saw something from Doom or Halo in a Call of Duty game. Like it doesn't surprise me in the least. Um, Danny Passion official drops an additional five dollars super chat and says, "You don't force a girl that you love to come on to uh, come to your apartment. You make her miss you after you leave her at <laughs> at her home, and she will come on her own on her own will." <laughs> oh, Christmas. Whoa, hey. Not only matching one, we really got deep with that one. Thanks so much, brother. Hitman drops an additional five dollars super chat. Says God of War movie coming to a Microsoft first tier. <laughs> you, yeah, indeed. Gameonomics drops a five dollars super chat. Says, do you think Game Pass users may get perks for mobile games like Candy Crush and COD Mobile? Some boost level or skins just connect with Xbox account. Yeah, I absolutely do. I actually think, and I, I was with the first one to say this. So remember, say, give me the credit where credit is do you're gonna see uh xbox game pass for mobile that that is that's coming there's no doubt about it that that's going to be a part of the conversation we have michael Cullick, generous friend of the show he drops a five dollar super chat and says microsoft should just go back to acquiring individual devs instead of publishers people just kept losing their minds about what would be exclusive yeah, I mean, Mike, I, I hear what you're saying, and those 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 acquisitions you're talking about are going to come in the form of Crystal D, uh, IO Interactive, Avalanche Studios, potentially uh, Eidos Montreal. You, you, yeah, NetherRealm. I, I think Sobo. NetherRealm. Sobo's one also. That if if you noticed yesterday, the whole Lord of the Ring things that we didn't even get into. Oh man, uh, and 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 that's that's huge. You're going to see that WB is going to start selling off pieces of itself. And I can guarantee you that in the conversation as we speak right now, it, it, it's uh, Microsoft is in talks to acquire um, Mortal Kombat developer NetherRealm. I, I'm I am telling you that is coming to an Xbox near you very soon. Now, whether that stays exclusive or when that happens, we will have a podcast. Let's get everyone out of here. Start first with Mav. Uh, Mav, brother, talk about where we're going to be tonight, what we're going to be talking about. Talk about your growing YouTube channel and any final thoughts on today's discussion. Yeah, man, this is a great discussion. Um, a lot of different takes, right? Shout out to Kay Asante, Everborn, John, Umbra, my brother from another Pong, Soul. We're going to be together tonight, man. And this yeah, is going sure to be awesome because we're going to be joined by the one and only. Part two. Part two tonight. Himself. <laughs> we're we're going into speculation town, as you can check on our thumbnail. We're all co-mayors, by the way. Yes, co-mayors. Yeah. yeah, we're sitting at the mayor's table there on our <laughs> thumbnail for the show tonight. Um, in speculation town, we're we're looking at the grand big picture of this all, right? Nice. What does it What does it mean for the future of gaming? What What is it? What does all of this mean? Like, where are we headed? You know, and. I think a lot of people get lost in this mindset of what we're, we're, we're doing now and what is how does this affect me tomorrow, right? We're going to take a look. How is this going to affect us in 10 years? What does the future actually hold, you know? Uh, so we'll look at that. Speculation Town awaits. Plus, maybe we'll dive into some Nintendo Direct stuff tonight. You know, I know that you guys are both extremely pumped for what you saw there yesterday. Uh, so. Yeah, dude. We Sports. <laughs> I already pre-ordered the Mario Kart nice. uh, uh, DLC. I bought a game that looked awesome. It was like a Japanese side-scrolling Castlevania-esque type of game. I, had, I bought, I don't even know the name of it was. How about them apples? I tweeted at Nintendo for the first time ever. Wow. That says a lot. That says a lot. Oh, so, yeah, we might, we might talk about that. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, so, yeah, tonight it's PM in the PM. 
featuring Pong and, and Boom here with me. And it's it's going to be a blast. So tune in. That's at 7 p.m. Eastern on Fun Speculation. So check it out tonight, guys. I hope to see you all there. And thanks for thanks for inviting me uh, on this impromptu kind of thing here, Boom. It was a lot of fun because we yes. had a lot of great great talks. Well, thank you so much for being here, brother. Uh, 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 Infinite Umbra, brother. Thank Actually, you so much for joining boom, us. Boom, boom. Yes. I, I gotta head over. Uh, can I get, get, get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, got, yeah, yeah. I gotta head over to Boxing Burgers channel because we're gonna talk about this, I'm sure, and other things over on World of Gaming on nice. Boxing Burgers' new podcast here starting in just about 10 minutes. So uh, anybody who wants to uh, listen Continue to uh, Boxing Burgers myself, and can, yeah, yes. exactly. Head on over there. It's gonna be a blast. I will see you all on PM on the PM in the PM tonight with Boom and Mav. Yes. We, again, it's going to be part two over there. This is a big conversation. It's going to be something we're going to be talking about for a very long time. But like Mav said, we're going to try to look at overall big picture. Pong Soul, Xbox, Twitter, follow me. I'll follow you back. I'm going to spare everybody uh, the big outro, but Xbox Ultimate Friday night, Saturday morning, living split screen with myself and yep. my brother from another Ice Steel Rain. I can't wait to hear his conversation on this as well. We've been going back and forth so we're gonna have a big show on saturday three yeah, live raw up. and uncut live raw and uncut 10 a.m eastern nine o'clock central time be there i can't wait to see you all there and shop podcast saturday night over on ptk blam's channel 8 p.m eastern seven o'clock central time golden age of gaming is here people there's a lot to talk about i know it's 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 tough to wrap our heads around all this we're just speculating we're having fun we're looking into the crystal ball there's big big things happening here enjoy it Man, this is crazy. I said it. I said it after the Activision Blizzard deal. Feels like six months of news has already happened, and that's only <laughs> that's only continuing here. This is crazy, but this is bomb why we do this. Bomb show. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. why we do this. And I there will be all. more. There will yeah, be yeah. a lot more. Oh, everyone. Yeah, this industry is rapidly changing. Love you all, brothers. It was fantastic. Care, brother. Shout out to Kaysante. Shout out to Mr. Bad Bit for being here as well. Love you all. Thanks for the great conversation. We'll talk to you all real soon. Take care. Always a pleasure, Pong. Later, man. I, I have to leave, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you I, guys, I already did my outro, here, guys. but I got to pass we'll, up. We'll, we'll, appreciate we'll, it, guys. We'll catch you have on the PM to, uh, show tonight. Umbra, uh, sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone where if they want to listen to, I don't know, sensible conversations and maybe potentially join a space that isn't filled with knuckleheads, they should check you out on Twitter. <laughs> what you got going on, brother? Yeah, you guys can find me under Infinite Umbra on uh, Twitter. Um and uh, we have a podcast as well. Myself, Risky for the Biscuit, and my brother Jedi Knight Peter. Uh, Xbox Infinite comes on on Fridays, nice. and I guess future Aussie time is Saturday for them. But mm. so Fridays for us, uh, which will be seven o'clock Eastern time uh, okay. for anyone that's wanted to catch us. And uh, we go live every Friday. Typically, uh, we've had a few down weeks because of internet issues for our host uh, Risky, but. Other than that, we're back on schedule now. So we hope you, I'm hoping that you guys in our chat can stop by if you can, if you're free, and give us a listen. Oh, and I want to thank you all for, for for a great conversation and boom again for inviting me on. Again. Oh, absolutely, brother. Anytime. Real quick, uh, uh, J, uh, T, uh, JT Gamer asked a question in the chat. It's Double Barrel Gaming, please answer this. If you do think Square Enix and Mon uh, if if Microsoft were to a uh, acquire uh adios montreal and uh crystal dynamics does tomb raider come with it i, I think it does so I, I i have a little bit of a different answer there i i think that um square probably has already let go Chris, crystal dynamics but yeah that's like for sure holding yeah. on to the paperwork until this whole stuff is done uh, but i think they keep idos montreal because people seem to be very happy with what they've done um with with uh guardians of the galaxy and just give tomb raider to them because square enix are stingy bastards and i wouldn't let it go if i was them so i i and, and, would I, and, and, and but again i sure but i think microsoft could use crystal dynamics with or without that ip especially now that they're gonna have pitfall yeah right no, I, I, so, so why yeah. not just spend and you listen Remember, if you're not getting the IP, you get them for less than $100 million, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to bring that to the the the, the, um, the FTC. I mean, maybe it's under $100 million. Who knows? Because they got they have a storied name. But I, I don't know how much you pay for them if they don't come for any come with any IP. 
you, you're just basically buying the name and you're now taking over the salaries, which you're already paying for them. I'm just saying you don't need Tomb Raider if you have a studio that can bring back Pitfall. I agree. I, th I think the Pitfall is a blank a blank page, and I would love to see uh, Pitfall Harry come back in uh, Nathan Drake esque type of tales. So Everborn, sell your brand, brother. Tell everyone where they can support the Everborn Saga. Yeah, man, Everborn Saga everywhere. Everborn Saga on YouTube, on Twitter. I'm very active there. Try to follow everyone who follows me, but also Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam and uh oculus or sorry it's not oculus anymore the meta quest which is the dumbest name ever uh but most importantly everbornsaga.com where you can get the books that we produce we produce you see my avatar there that's the cover of our one of our latest books ariel's adventure chapter one awesome. uh thank you thank you thank you we're getting ready to drop the redlands in about a week or so and uh, that'll be our newest book. And then we have The Remnant coming out later. So check out EverbornSaga.com. Check out Everborn Saga on Twitter. And check me and Mr. K. Asante out every Saturday on the Gaming Circle podcast. Uh, and I think Mav is joining us this week. And I could be, could be, I could be wrong, but I think Mav might be joining us. Um, be cool. uh, but, but yeah, oh, boom. I forgot to tell you, I will not be on uh, PTG Monday on Monday because I'll be in Paris. Yes, yes. Post a lot of pictures. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, well, please post and, 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 eat, and eat some good food when you're out there. Yes, for sure. I will. Some pastries. No yes. snails. No snails. No, no, no. Say, say no <laughs> to snails. Hashtag say no to snails. John Snow. Uh, I say John Snow. John Wolf. Uh, say your brand, brother. Tell one people if people want to get uh, in touch with you and strike up a conversation, where could they do that? And yeah. what's going on with your YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. Boom. Thanks again for the invite and apologies for being a little bit late. Work kind of nah. caught me work caught me on something and I couldn't let go of the boss. Uh but uh thanks boom again and and yeah, if you guys want to follow me on Twitter it's John Wolf, uh Xbox, PlayStation, uh John Wolf all across and yeah, this Sunday I'll be interviewing Crispy Bomb. We're going nice. to get to yeah, I'm going to get one. to know Crispy uh really well, uh his Xbox gaming background and we're going to go uh, knee deep into these topics as well boom so thank you so much again for the invite everborn uh great great brand dude uh the the just the artwork on that just looks amazing umbra thank you for bringing some amazing you know thoughts uh you know to to the conversation today and yeah th thanks a lot guys uh nice to be here Sorry, right, brother. Brother. Listen, folks, uh, I'm, I want to say a big thank you to all of the uh, the chat that delivered on incredible conversations. Of course, I want to say thank you for the super chats that came in. It was quite a, a bunch of them. And of course, those uh, empower Mrs. Boomstick and I to do big giveaways. Uh, and uh, we are going to continue that trend in 2022. And of course, I'm going to close out the show with something that is important to me. Hopefully one day, folks, it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dear old dad taught us when we were kids. And he said, son, treat others how you want to be treated. It also doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules. And I can guarantee you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast.